Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the Funny Fueler Digger Dragster. It's a 125 scale kit from AMT, number 1154. It's really a fantasy build because uh, a dragster really couldn't be practical in this configuration. It might have made for a really great show car, however. Now, you could pretend even though uh, the driver absolutely has no forward vision through that engine and uh, the back end, they were using maybe an experimental camera or something mounted in the grill. Now the AMT kit first came out in 71 as a stingery and then uh, they had a number of boxings that included different uh, bodies and, and decals, over a dozen of them. Now it was reboxed in 2019 with some new parts and some um, great looking uh, decals and expanded sheet there and it has 78 pieces. It's molded in white with chrome plated parts, three optional window choices, and some nicely uh, pad printed drag slicks and bicycle skinnies for up front. When it's done it'll be about 10 inches long, 3 inches wide, and 2 inches tall. Hi Newt! Hey! What's up? Uh, am I talking too fast again? Well, yes, but I saw this model from the viewing room and it really caught my eye. I hear that. It's a real beauty, and it looks great on the shelf. It looks really fast. How fast will it go? Well, it wasn't a real dragster, so the fastest it might go is from the shelf to the floor if the wheels rotate, or if you have a problem with the build from the bench to the wall. But that's why we're here, to help avoid that. Here's the contents of the kit. Uh, as you can see, there's not a lot of parts there, uh, but uh, some of it's a bit tricky, although uh, the one-piece frame really makes things a, a lot more simple. Now, uh, we'll be using mostly a liquid cement, sometimes super glue, uh, and uh, some crystal clear or white glue for the windows. But remember to uh, heed the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products or items you see here on the review. Now, that was my uh, version of the open box review, and um, you're all done with that now. Here are the decals for the kit, and talk about colorful. This thing really pops. But there's also a lot of extra decals here. We won't be using all of them for this build, so they'll make a nice addition to your stash, too. Now, remember, you may need to use some uh, decal setting solution that's uh, available in the aftermarket to get these to settle and follow all the curves. Construction starts with the engine assembly, so gather the parts shown here for step one, and uh, you'll have to actually find them visually. There are no part numbers on the sprues. That's how old this uh, mold is. The directions have the order of assembly part numbers, and then uh, the descriptions of them. So. Being an older mold, uh, there's uh, some, some scene lines and uh, you, you injector pin marks and some sprue tabs you'll have to, uh, you know, address with uh, scraping and sanding. Now I use some extra thin cement and super glue for most of the assembly here. So assemble the engine halves, the oil pan, the front cover, heads, and the intake. And then I painted it uh, an orange color. Um, the assembled blower with the injector riser um, and that was put together and just uh, touched up and painted with some Molotov chrome pen. And then I painted the belts and the oil pump uh, flat black. Go ahead and re, uh, uh, place all the remaining pieces on the engine. Um, I painted the pulleys chrome and then the magneto a gray with uh, a little black uh, trim and touched up the chrome parts again with a Molotow chrome pen because uh, there's some sprue tabs and you'll have to remove them from that. Then I used some uh, enamels and acrylics uh, for paints and some uh, small sable brushes for hand painting and detailing and you can see how that turned out right here. 
The next step will involve these pieces, including some of the chrome pieces. So remember, you have to scrape off any chrome of a mating surface that you want to glue for a good bond. Um, so grab those pieces, and then we'll start assembly of the rear of the frame. And so um, remove the imperfections, as I said, and, and sand those off and smooth. And then I kind of jumped the instructions here and assembled the transmission and the axle first on the rear then. I placed uh, those in the frame with the chrome clutch housing and the steering components using the longer of the two steering arm shafts but I didn't glue the clutch housing to anything so that I could remove it after the axle and the steering assemblies were securely in place. Now I didn't uh, glue the steering wheel in at this time either. I, I put the gas tank in and touched that up with some chrome uh, pen and then uh, we'll place that in the frame later. Now the um, the gas pedal I painted uh, flat black and set that aside uh, to dry. Now glue in the side braces, filter, the clutch pedal and the front cross member uh, from step three. And I left all the chrome parts out from the assembly at this time. And so I'm going to show you some views of the frame so that you can see how the various assemblies um, are placed. Uh, and then once all of this was done, I painted it with a uh, low luster flat black primer. Uh, and so then we're going to get that uh, painted up and let that set and thoroughly dry. Once the frame and the parts there had uh, dried, I painted the entire thing uh, with some Tamiya XF53, that's a um, flat neutral gray, uh, and then uh, moved on uh, to the next step these parts from the kit for the front end, the wheels and the tires and the um, suspension pieces there. And then uh, go ahead and clean those up. Once again you may have to uh, touch the uh, spots up with the uh, chrome pen uh, where you remove them from the sprues. So this will be uh, all the, the axle there, the tie rod, the rims and the tires. Now the tires appeared to be uh, pretty tight fit from test fitting so I stretched them over a uh, bottle uh, cap here to, to stretch them out a little bit. You may also want to just warm those up with a warm uh, a blow dryer as well. Glue the front axle assembly uh, to the frame and then glue the engine assembly uh, to the transmission, steering parts and the frame using some, some super glue to uh, securely keep those in place. The body is up next, so we'll start cleaning that up. And I use some sandpaper, um, starting with a low 240 grit and finishing with an 800, to remove some uh, protruding in injector pin marks, uh, ejector pin marks, uh, and use some automotive glaze putty to fill in the recessed marks, and sanding them smooth with uh, the same grit paper. Then I gave the body uh, a coat of Stenel Res White Primer. Next, I painted the body inside and out with my choice of Tamiya Lemon Yellow, it's X8, and the hood scoop was painted a flat black. I thought that the um, yellow um, went so well with the orange windows that um, I would use the orange tinted windows for my uh, build. And once again, they, there's clear and blue, so there's uh, just about any number of color combinations that you could use. I have these pieces out of the kit for step four, the radius rods and the um, uh, the roll bar and the, uh, uh, you know, the racing brackets there, uh, as you see, and clean those up uh, for assembly coming next. So I painted the uh, seat uh, Tamiya Flat Brown XF10, and then the roll cage uh, and the push bars were the same gray as the frame, and I added a little um, dark brown wash to the seat for the recesses too. Now I glued the radius rods to the front axle and the frame using some super glue and then again touch those up with a chrome pen where any of the um, uh, requirement was. Next I glued the seat in, the, the roll cage pieces, the push bar, fuel tank, gas pedal handbrake and the steering wheel. And then the steering wheel can't really be placed in there before the seat. Now the uh, interior sides of the body not being square, there's four locator tabs that shouldn't be used. So I remove those. Now touch up uh, and scrape any of the marks in the paint from fitting the seat into place. 
next up grab the rear wheel assemblies and the uh, headers there etc and the related pieces you see here uh, including the parachute and steering linkage um, the exhaust you know uh, and then the steering linkage in my kit ha was kind of uh, flaking off the chrome uh, so once again bring out the chrome pen and touch it up assemble the uh, rear tire halves and glue the rim halves inside the tires after removing the plating and now um, I glued the brakes to the axle and the tires to the axle brake assembly then I scuffed the tires uh, in the tread area with a 400 grit sandpaper on a flat piece of uh, uh, surface and then glue the frame to the lower half of the body and then glue the chute and push bar to the body now using some uh, clear parts glue I glued the orange glass uh, to the upper part of the body inside and then after painting the exhaust flat white I drilled out the exhaust tips uh, with an eighth inch bit and um, filled the holes there with some black paint to give it a little realism now glue the exhaust to the engine through the holes in the body and but don't glue the uh, steering linkage to the body until the decals are placed now here's a little trick um, in order to preserve being able to see uh, the interior of this car which is where all the interesting stuff is um, we're going to place the body together with a little bit of um, white glue and then just in spaces where you know it'll kind of keep it together uh, and then we're going to uh, later on we'll just um, uh, scrape and wash the glue away with some water but uh, we're going to do that to keep it together then when it was uh, dry the glue I placed all four of the side decals on the body and set them with some uh, setting solution and then I I cut the body seam carefully uh, where the halves meet with a, a brand new blade so it's nice and sharp and then I pulled the body halves apart and uh, sealed the side decals with some clear coat um, I used some pledge floor gloss here but after that was dried I placed the hood decals into position on top well here are some of the parts that you'll have left over from the uh, build for this kit uh, I'm going to assume that these went to different versions of the kits boxings um, also of course the uh, the windows uh, had both the blue and the clear ones left over um, they may come in handy someday uh, for a steampunk version well there you have it the model is complete uh, it's actually a visually stunning looking kit uh, sitting on your shelf it'll really get some attention it's not a difficult kit to build uh, especially if you just uh, build it with the halves together I mean uh, after all at that point you can't even see much that's inside uh, but if you want to do something a little different uh, and split it in half uh, that'd be for a, a more advanced builder but nonetheless it's not that hard to do and it was actually a fun kit to build um, it's a simplified motor and uh, the frame is one piece so it's easy but uh, it uh, includes some really nice looking visuals and the uh, uh, the graphics on it are obviously uh, beautiful now uh, if I were you I'd buy one and put it on my shelf we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step scale kit review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel you can do that by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews. You can find us on Facebook or our website right on replicas.com. Thanks.